Hi guys, it's your girl Miss G and I'm back with another video. So if you don't know, now you know. Um, it's sad to report that another parent has killed their children. Her name is Tina Campbell from Long Island, New York. And she decided to end her children's life. Um, it's sad because I read different um, reports and different news briefings. And so a different news briefing, they're gonna, they're gonna say, you know, some saying that she doesn't have a mental illness, some saying that she does. Um, they're all type of accusations saying that she did it because um, she was getting evicted, she did it because she had a mental illness. But right now she's under um, suicide watch at, in jail. Also, um, she called her mother and told her mother that, that she ended her kid's life. And of course the mom called 911 as soon as possible and had them on three way and dispatchers try to you know find her as soon as possible to get to the kids to see if they were um still living and they weren't i'm glad her third child wasn't with her the boy the four-year-old son because guarantee if he was with them um he would have probably been not here as well i just feel like this is a touchy subject and i want to make y'all watch the um the report that the news the New York police station had made and you guys can like comment and share so that everyone knows what's really going on like I don't see this being like on CNN or Fox News or Good Morning America you don't see news like this all over the world you just see stuff mostly about politics or you know bombing or stuff like that I feel like everyone should know about this stuff because this is getting to the point that it's becoming frequent now that parents are killing their kids in the United States more often and I don't know what's going on we need to help our parents out there get them to like a parenting class um a, a mental health class something because we don't know what's going on in these private households so yeah I'm gonna play the video now and tell me what y'all think so let's go morning thank you for joining us here at police headquarters uh, this is a tough day um, I want to thank all the law enforcement agencies that are here I want to thank the Suffolk County Police Department also the East Hampton Town Police Department for their response but all the law enforcement agencies that are here you know we think about the work that they do on a daily basis and it is uh, difficult work they put their safety on the line for others but uh, yesterday was um, something you cannot be prepared for and uh, a scene that you cannot imagine. I think I, I speak um, on behalf of parents all across this county. What happened yesterday is incomprehensible to us. As the father of three young kids, it, it's unimaginable and beyond tragic. And those two girls, Jasmine and Jada, uh, those beautiful young girls, who lost their lives yesterday. Um, in Suffolk County, our hearts are broken. And we will keep them and their families, those who love them, uh, in our prayers for sure. Um, again, my thanks to all of the law enforcement for what they do for each of us on a daily basis and for their response yesterday. With that, uh, I want to turn it over to Suffolk County Police Commissioner Jerry Hart. Commissioner. Thank you. Good morning. I'd first like to begin by recognizing the members of the Suffolk County Police Department that join me here, our Chief of Department, Stu Cameron, our Deputy Police Commissioner, James Skopeck. We have our Detective Lieutenant from our Homicide Squad, Kevin Breyer, as well as our Deputy Chief of Detectives, Matthew Lewis. I also want to acknowledge our law enforcement partners that have joined us here today and thank them for their partnership. We have with us New York State Police Lieutenant Gary Ryan, Southampton Town Police Lieutenant Michael Zaro, Southampton Town Police Department Detective Lieutenant James Kiernan, East Hampton Town Police Chief Michael Sarlo, New York State Park Police Lieutenant Alex Goodman, East Hampton Town Police Captain Christopher Anderson, East Hampton Town Police Detective Sergeant Dan Toya. I want to thank them again all for their partnership. 
And before I begin, I just want to caution that the facts are still developing, but I will share what we know so far. Most importantly, though, I want to express on behalf of all law enforcement our sincerest, sincerest prayers and condolences to the Campbell family for this horrific, horrific incident. I want to tell you that we work together using all our resources in hopes of bringing a peaceful resolution to the Campbell family. Unfortunately, Jasmine and Jada lives were cut short in the most tragic way imaginable. In law enforcement, we have to separate our emotion from our responsibilities, but I think I speak on behalf of everybody in law enforcement that yesterday was very difficult. These cases are not easy and they impact us all, and we would like to offer again our sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Jasmine and Jada. Our 911 communication center received a 911 call at approximately 2.30 p.m. yesterday. A woman explained to the emergency complaint operator that her daughter, Tanaya Campbell, who was on another line, was threatening to kill herself and her twin two-year-old daughters. A three-way call between the ECO, Tanaya and her mother began. The call lasted nearly 12 minutes and during that time, the ECO elicited as much information as possible. However, Tanaya, who was at times hysterical, would not reveal her whereabouts. During the conversation, Tanaya indicated that the girls were already deceased. A massive search began involving multiple precincts in our aviation section and highway patrol. We enlisted the assistance of the state police, Suffolk County Park Rangers, Suffolk County Park Police, Southampton Town Police, East Hampton Town Police, and the Coast Guard Montauk. We checked a number of locations, including Tanaya's mother's home in Mastic, her home in Medford, her children's daycare in Brentwood, and current and previous employment locations in East North Fort and West Hampton. We also checked a location where her four-year-old son was located and unharmed. While the search was on, the Amber Alert process was initiated. She was entered into National Crime Information Center, NCIC, as a suicidal and homicidal missing person. Her license plate was broadcast throughout our police jurisdiction and to our partner agencies. Alerts and alarms were also placed on her license plate. Due to the nature of this emergency, an exigent circumstances, circumstances telephonic GPS was conducted which helped lead us to her location. East Hampton Town Police officers located Tanaya at the entrance to Montauk County Park, Third House Nature Center. Tanaya had parked her car in the entrance of the park, walked to Montauk Highway, and started screaming at responding officers to shoot her. During this chaotic time, the officers took her safety, safely into custody and located the girls in the car seats in the vehicle. Both were in cardiac arrest. The officers attempted life-saving efforts and the twins were transported by Montauk Ambulance to Stony Brook Southampton Hospital where they were pronounced dead a short time later. The girls had no outward sign of trauma and autopsies will be performed today to determine the exact cause of death. Campbell was transported to East Hampton Police Headquarters where homicide squad detectives charged her with two counts of murder in the second degree. She will be arraigned today in East Hampton Town Justice Court. Again, I want to thank our law enforcement partners for their assistance. With their help, we were able to locate Campbell and bring her to justice. And with that, I'll take any questions. Commissioner, based upon the earlier report, what were the two children dead at the time of the phone call? And have the suspect said anything? So I can tell you that on the 12 minute call uh, with our dispatch center, she had said, she had indicated that the children were already deceased. But has the, has obviously that will be determined, but based on the time of death, can that be verified yet? So we have not verified that yet. That will be part of the ongoing investigation. And has she said anything in terms of motive? No. Are you uh, aware of any sort of domestic situations at her house involving herself and her family leading up to this? So we have no record in our uh, database of any domestics. Know where the father of the children are? So the, the father of the two-year-old uh, girls was, it was, they were estranged. 
and there was near, there's no real relationship uh, with the girls, but he's been notified. Is there a history of mental illness? Not to our knowledge. The four-year-old son, where was he found? Do we know exactly where he was? He was found with his father. With his dad, yeah. In, in which hamlet or town? So that's not something we'd yeah. release right now. What's like the GPS tracking was used to locate her? Was it a Google Maps or was it the phone itself? So it was uh, something that we went direct with the phone company and were able to get that exigent circumstances. Oh, with her, because of the phone call, you mean? You were able to get her whereabouts? Yes. What's the mother do for work? So she's a home health care aide. And does she take care of the children by herself or does she live with her mother? Or? As far as we know, she takes care of the children by herself. Her mom does help? Her mom helps. You mentioned that an Amber Alert was initiated, uh, but no Amber Alert was received by residents of the county. So it was initiated, and by the time uh, it went through uh, full process, the children had been located. Were the children supposed to be in daycare yesterday, and where was the mother headed? Do we know that? So we do not know where the mother was headed, and they had not been in daycare for a few days. And what is the status of the four-year-old boy now? He's uh, unharmed and, and with his dad. So the little boy never lived with her, but lived with dad? He had primary custody? Or? The mother had custody. Um, he was with the father yesterday. Okay. County social service agencies have no reports whatsoever of any problems inside the home. One way or we don't have any indication. No. Can you say how the kids were killed, or is that still a part of the investigation? That's part of the investigation. How did you locate the car again? So again, we uh, received an exigent circumstance um, permission from the phone company, and we pinged the phone and followed the phone. And that was initiated right after the call was received. Correct. How would the police department characterize her mental state uh, at the time of her arrest? Was she manic? Was she? I think hysterical is a fair term. Yeah. Hysterical, we can say. Can you just clarify how she was found? When she was found, she was not in her vehicle, and she was running towards Montauk Highway asking police to shoot her. That's correct. So had police already approached the vehicle, or they found her and then located the vehicle? They were within sight of each other, so, right, so they were where, where she was, you could see the vehicle. So. She's on suicide watch at this point? She's being arraigned today, yes. Right. She was, she, she she was monitored on last watch? night for, uh, on suicide watch, was one-on-one -on -one monitoring, um, and she'll be arraigned today. We'll take one more question. Or no questions? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Is the possibility being looked at that the children could have been exposed to high temperatures or high heat? So a full autopsy is being conducted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.